The Secret of Forgiving Lecture by Shiri Dayamata March 24th, 1969 Remembrance of Jesus Christ's supreme sacrifice for mankind, I think of Guru Deva Paramahansa Yogananda's oft-repeated declaration that Christ performed his greatest miracle on the cross. With every right to curse and condemn his betrayer and the others who had wrongly judged him, and with all power at his command to destroy his enemies, Jesus did not use that power, nor did he feel any animity. Rather, he showed the world the divine way to conquer evil, the way that alone can resurrect man's soul from dark ignorance into the light of eternal wisdom, eternal communion with God. That way was immortalized in Christ's simple words of love. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is an extremely important message for mankind even today. A message that each one of us should apply in our lives if we would keep the light of divine love in our hearts and in this world. It is essential to rid the heart and mind of all bitterness and resentment. Such feelings don't belong there. When someone has acted unkindly against us, why do we feel we have to do something about it? Why can't we just leave it in God's hands? I believe in this. Cannot we too say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do knowing full well when the divine law, the divine love, will solve that problem for us. In countless ways, this law has worked for me throughout my life. It will work also for you and for all mankind. The trouble is with us. We cannot let go of our mean and hateful thoughts, of our vengeful, angry, envious feelings. Because we cannot let go of the hand of Satan, of delusion, and that is all these wrong thoughts and feelings really are, we are unable to grasp the hand of the divine. Let us try to resurrect our consciousness from the dark sepulchre of hatred, anger, and meanness. You know what meanness is? The desire to hurt another person. All of us probably have hurt others unconsciously at times. We should sincerely ask anyone whom we may thus have hurt to forgive us. And never should we knowingly lift our hand, even in thought, against another human being. If we were to do so, the first to suffer would be ourselves, because in that moment we would lose the inner awareness of God. Seek Realization of the Soul repository of love. There is but one desire in my soul for you. Because of the joy, the sense of peace and security, and the great love that I find in my own soul, I crave to see each one of you bathed in that divine consciousness. True, it is very difficult to achieve that consciousness and very difficult to hold on to it. 
My duty, therefore, to those of you who are striving to change your lives in a divine way, is to remind you when you stray from the goal and to urge you to follow ever more deeply, ever more sincerely, ever more devotionally in the footsteps of our Guru. Guru Deva was the very embodiment of kindness, love, forgiveness, and compassion. There was not one mean or selfish streak in him, yet some misunderstood him, even as there were those who misunderstood Christ. When one has habituated himself to darkness, his eyes cannot stand the light. It is blinding. So when anyone turns away from the light of understanding and right behavior, and steeps himself in the darkness of self-pity and self-interest and self-concerns, he resents anyone or anything that reflects that light. If he were receptive to it, he would find that it brightens all the corners of his consciousness and of his life, and gives him the very things he craves, but has not applied the right principles to achieve. So, let us with renewed fervor cry in our souls for God. I do. I want him desperately every moment of my life. Sometimes I awaken in the middle of the night. There is no desire to sleep, only to spend every possible moment talking to God. That to me is reality. And because I find my pleasure, my peace, my joy, in the communion with him, I want it for every one of you. My suffering comes when I see those who blindly cling to their faults and weaknesses and do not let go and let God take charge of their lives. That you must do if you would achieve self-realization. Trust more in God, believe more in God, accept God. Have faith in him, who can right every wrong that has been done to you. You don't have to defend yourself. Let God be your defender. When people misunderstand me, my concern is not that they be perfectly attuned with Dayama, but with God. At such times, I pray urgently to the Divine Mother. Bless them, bless them, awaken their consciousness in you. Let them look only to you, let them cling to you. In that prayer lies my joy and peace of mind about my relationship with those souls. Our Guru Deva used to say, I cannot be content until I see that every one of you, every one, is racing toward the feet of my Divine Mother. That is also my own humble and earnest wish, because as he also said, always remember, nothing can ever touch you if you inwardly love God. For this reason, every one of us should be inwardly in love with God. Then his love, so intoxicating and all-consuming, completely erases any trace of worldliness. So that no matter what anyone may do to us, we are inwardly undisturbed, remaining always in the same consciousness of one divine love toward all. 
The mind has tremendous power to do good or to do evil. And in these days of much unrest, let us all join in deeply praying for mankind. It is essential that while we as individuals are striving to achieve some degree of realization, some degree of safety in the thought of God, we pray also for this suffering world. Pray that man may learn how to resolve all his problems with God, not Satan, as his guide. Clinging not to the evil force, but to God and God alone. Excerpts from the book, Only Love, by Shiri Dayamata. <laughs> 